that there's more of you than my brothers and sisters and my mom and Damon that can jump. There is something too. David said, I will dance before my king. I will dance unashamed. I don't care. He danced naked. We all got our clothes on. But there is something in you that when you give him all you got, something breaks in you. So we're going to do this with a cry of praise. And we're going to come back. And I want you to jump with a cry of praise in me. My heart will prevail. You are good. You are good. And in the shadow rain, my heart celebrates. You are good. You are good. And I'll sing because you are good. share something real good real quick I'm back there and Kylie's jumping that's a little girl they said would never walk but yesterday the other day I went to her I just want to tell a praise report quick I went to her therapy appointment and my friend was there and she's her therapist and she, they had her writing these words on this big blackboard and my friend Beth says you don't understand because Kylie has holes in her brain gaps in her brain and it makes things hard for her and they told me she's on this big blackboard, and they're giving her words to write. And, and they said, you don't understand how far she's come. And sometimes we don't realize how far this little girl's come. They said when she came here, she would write in a space this big, and her letters were so little that we couldn't read them. And she wrote her letters backwards and all her words backwards because her mind couldn't see them the right way. I mean, they said we couldn't even read it. We'd have to get a mirror to be able to see what she was saying. And I went in there this Friday, and they're going to discontinue her therapy. Do you understand? How many words does she know, Amanda, now? How many words, Amanda, Matt? 133 words. The little girl who couldn't see wrote letters and whole words backwards. Now can read 133 words. Come on. Our God is good. Come on, we're going to sing it again. Come on. of this house. Go ahead, Damon. So last night after we put the kids to bed, I was telling Lena, I was like, we finally got our pool in shape, and this is going somewhere spiritual. Just go with me for a second. And I was like, I would love, I always wanted to swim at night, and Lena, it freaks her out. I just like, I just love it. And uh, so it was about 10 o'clock, and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going swimming. And she was like, what? And I was like, I'm going swimming. 
And I went and got in the water, and I was swimming around, and then she snuck out, and she was on the pool deck, and she was sitting out there to talk to her. She wouldn't get in, you know, hair and all that stuff, but, you know, she was watching me, and she was, we were talking, and we started talking about, man, we've had a year, haven't we, babe? And we started talking about all the things that's happened in our life that were negative, and not in a bad way, just reminiscing. And then I look up, and uh, for the first time ever, I saw a shooting star right over. I was like, man, that's beautiful, the star, shooting star. And it was like God said, but God. All this bad stuff happened, but God. And look where you're at right now. And look what you're not going through that right now. And look how I brought you through that to the right now. And, and what you're going to go through and what you're going to face in the next year and in this next season, but God. So I want you to remember, we're going to sing this song, He is Faithful. So let's close our eyes. Let's just lift our hands right now before we even begin. You're faithful. Just start telling him, you're faithful in my job, in our finances, in my family, in that salvation that's needed for my lost loved one. You're faithful, God. You're faithful in every situation. There's nothing that you can't handle, and there's nothing too small you don't care about. You care about everything, and you especially care about me. So, God, you're faithful, and we praise you for it. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with you. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I
yesterday. Say it one more time. I said, all your promises are yesterday. Say it like you say it. Come on, come on. I said, all your promises are yesterday. Today is the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. I could go home right now and be blessed, amen. But we're not going home, don't worry. <laughs> but I, I was thinking of a story the Lord gave me about seven minutes ago, and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And it's such a basic story. I don't know why I ever overlooked this, but the revelation of God showed this to me. When Noah got off the ark, God said to release all the animals, leave all the small and the large, and all the animals left. In verse 20, in chapter 8 of Genesis, it says this, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And you know what he was doing that altar? He was saying, you're still faithful. You're still faithful. Noah was 601 years old. Noah waited for a long time on that ark. Everyone made fun of him. They mocked him. He was the only righteous man in all of the world, the Bible says. But when he got off, he didn't say, oh, look at those people. He said, God, you're still faithful. So what I'm saying today is I believe some of you all ain't halfway there. You don't understand. There's been many times you shouldn't even be here. But the faithfulness of God has kept you alive. The grace of God has kept you alive. The mercy of God has someone to act, shout like you've been saved. Amen. And see, it's, it's God's faithfulness time and time again. And it's not coincidence. It's his faithfulness. So we're going to do something he might have did 10,000 years ago. I'm not going to build an altar, but what I am going to do, I'm going to use my hands on an altar. And I'm going to use my face as an altar. I'm going to use my voice as an altar. And I'm going to raise my hand and say, God, you are faithful. Raise your hands right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you have been faithful, God, from the beginning till the end, God. God, we thank you that you are God and you are good in every circumstance. And we bind the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare your kingdom come and your will be done. Right now, in Jesus, my name I pray. Now we sing this song right now. I want you to raise your hand, keep raising your hands and tell him God how faithful he is. Come on, tell him how good he is. If you can't do it here, you're not going to do it in heaven. Come on. Hallelujah. Tell him. Faithful forever. Yes, Lord.
before the King of kings, let every tongue confess that He is Lord. Lift up your shout, let us join with all of heaven singing, Holy is, we're singing, Holy is, we're singing, Holy is. faithfulness of the God that we serve. Amen. We just keep on going. Y'all right with that? As we were singing how faithful God is, it took us five years to have any kids. We wanted, we wanted kids so bad. And then we had, we finally had Benjamin. But then, then after we had Benjamin and Joshua, then we started getting attacks. Actually, actually with Benjamin. We started getting taxed from the enemy. Try to take Benjamin's life, give him birth disease come upon him, and then God healed him. Amen. Joshua, we, we, after two miscarriages, we have, was having a third miscarriage. And just faith believing and standing on God's word, God turned it around. And Joshua 16 today. Amen. 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 Sorry, I'm not going to let him do this. <laughs> I gotta do it. Benjamin, Joshua, Caleb, Jeremiah, Becca, you guys come here for yes. just a minute. Yeah, I have not come up. You I come up here. here. Come on. Benjamin, that Perth Ace disease, those doctors told us that he would be in a wheelchair till he was 21 because he would be in and out of surgery, in and out of surgery his entire life. God healed him, Benjamin. God healed you. I want you to run a lap around this church today. And you praise him because you can run. You didn't have to have any kind of surgeries. 
you give him a victory lap today, Benjamin. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord! Praise you, Lord! Praise you, Lord! Look at him go, Lord! Look at him go! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Oh, thank you, Father. And Joshua, that boy right here, he wouldn't be here but God. But God, the enemy tried to steal him. But God. Oh, Father. Oh, and my Caleb. <laughs> He's my stinker, and I love it. <laughs> the devil tried to take his voice. He tried to take his tongue. When he was 18 months old, he was climbing on a chair, and he fell, and he cut his tongue nearly in half. He still has a line on there, so that's the, he's the only one of my kids that's allowed to stick their tongue out at you because there's still a line. God left a memorial there to remind him that he is going to be a powerhouse for the Lord. Whew. My babies, Jeremiah and Becca, guys, come here. These guys were born at 28 weeks. She was 2'9", and he was 3'3". Three, three. They spent three months in the hospital, but God. Now my Jeremiah, during that three month stay, they dropped him. The nurses had him on a little rolling cart and he had oxygen and the nurse had forgotten that he had oxygen and she took off with him and pulled him off of that cart. He hit the trash can in the floor in the NICU, but God. He was brain dead. This boy right here was brain dead for 10 days. But God, he stands before you today 100% healthy and safe. Every one of my children. But God, so I'm telling you today, if you are going through anything, you get up to this altar. If God has done anything for you, you give him the praise. Because God is faithful. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still in the business of miracles. His signs and wonders. We're going to sing this one more time. Sing it like you're saved. Sing it like you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Get your hands up. Our God is faithful. Amen. Our God is our God is faithful. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus.
those boys are up here. It's like the Lord is saying, behold the faithfulness of God. When you look at Kylie, behold the faithfulness of God. My sister has her Bible underlined and her kids' names, and I got my mama, my mama's got our kids, her kids' names of promises. I got my kids in my Bible, they got promises and scriptures I pray about and they don't know because I know that the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Because our God is faithful. Your God is faithful. And someday, I promise you, you're going to probably be in a spot because as that life goes, and you're going to need to remember that your God is faithful. Sing it one more time. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. Come on. Lift your hands. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus. Yes, we worship you. Oh, hail the Savior of the world. Amen. You know, uh, before we, I can't dismiss children yet. Just give me a few minutes. I sense in my spirit there's some of you that are not right with the Lord. If you died right now, I'm asking you the question, where would you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? There's only two places you go to. And if you can't eat for 100%, the first thing in your mind is heaven, then you need to make things right with Jesus. If you would be that person, I want you to raise your hand right now. Say, I want to make things right with Jesus. I want him to be Lord of my life. If, you, if it's anybody, raise your hand right now. Say, I want to make things right with Jesus today. Amen. I see we got one hand raised. Come on, I know there's more than one. More. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you the question that I ask. Can you just answer the word? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin birth? Say yes. yes. Do you believe that he is the son of God? Yes. Do you believe he died on the cross and three days later he rose again for your sins? Yes. And do you believe he's coming again? Yes. Say, say Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior of my life. If you honestly made that prayer, let's give our Lord a hand clap. Amen. I want you to, whoever those people were, to go back there in the back of the information booth, fill out a card, and Jesus is Lord of your life. Amen. Children, be dismissed, please. God is good. All the time. Go ahead. You know, I want to share with you real quick. When Phil and Sandy started coming to this church, will you look at them and you think, man, I could never have such faith. But when they came to this church, they were just like you. Sandy used to say to me, she'd volunteer at Cradle, and she would say, why do you guys have to be so serious? <laughs> Why is everything so serious? And you see what God did just because they were faithful step by step by step. What God did in their life. You can have that same trust and faith in our God. Amen. Amen. One more time. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap for what he's already done. <laughs> Amen. Man, God is good all the time and all the time. I say that, every, I say that all the time. I remind myself. And I want to remind the enemy today that God is still good. Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. When my great-granddaughter was born, she had all the signs of autism. And I put her on the prayer list. Everybody's prayed. And the other day I went in, she's making sentences, and she says, Grandma Bush, come play Play-Doh with me. Amen. And but God, and he's going to finish what he started. Amen. Amen. 
You might be your first time here or you haven't been here in a while. You're like, man, why do people talk so much? Because we need to remind the world and everyone around us that God is still faithful. And God is still doing miracles. You know, and, and so we want to give God the glory and what he has done in our life and what he is doing in our life. So, you know, the two greatest things that God has given you, given his spirit when you ask to be the Lord of your life. And the second thing he's given you is your testimony. Your testimony of what, what God has done through your journey through him. And we need to tell that testimony. Tell it to ones around. If he did it for me, he can do it through you. Amen? Everybody say breakthrough. This is series two. Next week, uh, probably going probably to finish it up. I'm not for sure yet. And I'm going to be doing a, a series. I want you to bring all your friends and families to do a series on past, present, and future. And a lot of us can't break through because of our past. And that's the lie the enemy has given us. So uh, next week will be past, present, and future. But breakthrough. And, and uh, real quick, Family Fun Day is going to be um, August 25th. Be sure to sign up in the back if you want to do sides or whatever. Uh, whatever you want to bring for that. And if you have friends, bring all your friends that want to come and do not let them bring anything. All right, we want to bring enough. They can just come. We want to love on them and bless and see them come to Jesus. Amen? They're our guests. And we just want to serve them the best we can serve them. They don't need to bring anything but themselves. So uh, it's going to be a good time. Cornhole and sumo suits. It's going to have a jumpy thing for the kids also, for the little kids. They're going to love that. Maybe some of the adults might love it too. I don't know. Uh, we'll have sand volleyball. We're going to use our sand volleyball court up finally. So it's going to be a lot of fun if it's just getting together and, and fellowshipping and, and being encouragement. Last week we talked on Breakthrough. It was the first series I spoke on. I talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, I talked about why sometimes uh, we stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. And I talked on Second Kings, uh, verse 4, about Elisha and how he told the widow to get the little bit of oil that she had in the empty containers and to, um, to go and, and to get all the containers she can to sell it, the oil that she gets. And I t- we talked about how when she finally ran out of containers, the, the oil stopped flowing. And we, uh, we talked about how do you stop the flow. We said your mind and your attitude and your heart. So last week was how do you stop the flow. This week we're going to talk about how do you keep the flow. How many want to keep the flow? Amen. I want to keep the flow of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just go through my life and be dry and beat up and wore out because that's not the way we were designed to live our life for Jesus. He said, Jesus said it made it so clearly, and I say the scripture I probably every other week. It's, he said, you have, should have life and have it what? More abundantly. Are you guys hot? Is anybody hot? All right, Damon, can you turn the air down for us? It's Okay. I told you to. (laughs) Will you turn it down up there, Jeremy? Put it. Just get it. It is a little warm in here. I'm going to start sweating like Richard Simmons. We don't want that, all right? So (laughs) that's right, Richard Simmons. You heard it. All right. No one one wants that. (laughs) And Wednesday night we talked about, you know, so we ask about the question is how to, to keep the flow of the Holy Spirit. And when you keep the flow of the Holy Spirit, You know, you're not surprised when you hear the voice of God. You know, people get all tripped up over celebrities and I saw so-and-so at the Derby or so-and-so was on Friends of Facebook and okay. But man, think about being the God Almighty is speaking to you. Isn't that awesome? The God that said, let there be light is speaking to you because he loves you. And not not to be surprised when God speaks to you. If you're flowing in the Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit is leading you, when he speaks to you, you know it's the Holy Spirit. You're like, was that God or was that just a burrito ate last night? All right? You're going to know what it is. Elijah, we talked on this Wednesday night. And put my little thing out there, my little commercial real quick. Everybody say Wednesday night. 6.30. We're still having church here, all right? It has been great. Praise God. We've been averaging almost, and I'm not in the numbers, but and this part I am on Wednesday nights because we've been seeing almost 150 people coming here on Wednesday nights to praise and worship God. Isn't it awesome? Several different churches have been coming in, and it has been powerful. A little young lady on the front row gave her heart to the Lord, what, two weeks ago? Is that right? I'm not embarrassed you, Emily. But that's awesome. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. 
But with Elijah, we talked on Wednesday night, with Elijah, wherever he went, and Elisha was with him, Elijah, wherever Elijah went, um, he said, the Lord is telling me to go here, and, and the Lord is telling me to go there. I tell you, if you're so in tune to the Holy Spirit, you should be going where God tells you to go. Amen? See, we make a lot of our own headaches, and we make a lot of our own pains because we do everything without really praying and seeking the face of God and letting God lead us. I mean, we're, we lead a lot of times in natural understanding. Does anybody ever lead in natural understanding? Well, it just sounds good to me. It looks good to me. It, maybe it should be this way. I remember 16 hours before my dad passed away, my father-in-law calls me, and I, the Lord spoke to me. He says, you're going to become a full-time pastor. And I said, okay, that's why I'm here. No, God was just allowing me to come here. See, our natural thinking sometimes will mess us up. So the question we're asking today, how do we keep the flow of the Holy Spirit. Number one is obedience. Everybody say obedience. So if you got a an iPhone or a Samsung or you got a bulletin, even old school, write that down. Obedience. To keep the flow of the Holy Spirit, you must obedience. You must obey what God tells you to do. I mean, everybody says, what? That sounds pretty simple. But sometimes God asks you to do things that just doesn't make any sense. Has anybody ever said that? God is telling you to do things, you're like, that just doesn't make any sense in my mind. But we know what the Word of God says. His ways are not our ways, and His thoughts are not our what? Our thoughts. That's right. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says this, and this is the New King James Version. And being assembly together with them, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to what? But to what? Wait. For the promise of the, fa the, promise of the Father, which He said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. See, we believe in this church that some people believe when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life, then you get, the bad, you get the Holy Spirit. But see, the disciples had to wait, and they had to ask for the Holy Spirit. Everybody say ask. you got to ask for it. Ask and seek and find, and you will. There's nothing hard about it. Say, I want the power of the Holy Spirit. See, they had to ask for it. And then they asked questions. This is, they're still talking to Jesus. And they said, when will the kingdom be restored? And he said, it's not for your time to know about this. This is the, the Father's time. But, now look at verse 8. One verse 8 says this. He says, but you shall receive what? And I want you to say it like you've been saved. You shall receive what? Oh, glory. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the end of the earth. See, he said you receive power. You know, when you don't receive the Holy Spirit, you give your heart to Jesus and you don't receive the Holy Spirit. It's like me getting a car and having a motor, but I can only drive at 30 miles an hour. But when I get the power of the Holy Spirit, then I can drive 70 and Tracy, don't get upset. Maybe a little bit faster than that, all right? <laughs> we know my wife will drive faster than that. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, and so you, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah, it's good you gave your heart to Jesus. Praise God you have. And you're going to make it with him in heaven. But don't you want the power? I don't want to drive 30 miles an hour to Clarksville. If I preached all day, I'm hungry. I want to get to Texas Roadhouse, all right? 30 is going to take a long time. But 70 is a lot quicker, amen. And when I get 70, maybe I can get around a few things and a few obstacles in my way. But when I go 30, I got to be held back. Is anybody with me so far? See, when you, when you, when you don't receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you're, you're held back. It's not a... It's not a a crazy thing. You know, it's funny, but when you are led by the Holy Spirit, I tell you, he'll have you do things you just thought you would never, ever do. I had a friend of mine preaching a revival down in Georgia, and he was there, and he was preaching hard, and I mean, just giving it all he's got, and the Lord said to him, he says, the man in the second row, he said, the cowboy, he said, go up to him and start mooing. So he goes right up to him, I'm going to use Owen as an illustration, and he did this, now bear with me now, Brr. That's all he did. He did it for 45 seconds. Y'all like, what in the world? And he murmured for 45 seconds. That guy got up on his feet 
and ran to the altar and bawled and cried for a while. Longer. And he said, and when he got up, and he didn't even know what it was. When he started moving, the Spirit of God came upon him. And then he began to prophesy in this man's life. And the man was supposed to start a cattle business, losing money after money after money. That was his dream, to be a, to be a cattle farmer. And he, kept, and he could not make any money at the Lord. And the Lord, the word that a friend gave said this. He says, there's a certain type of breed that you're supposed to invest in. And if you do this, you're going to succeed. And he said, I've been praying about this and praying about this. But you know what? How weird is that? All right, come on. I started mooing at some of y'all. You're like, all right, that guy's weird. All right. <laughs> I promise you, if I'm mooing at you, it's Jesus. All right. I am not, in, <laughs> I am not into being weird. I don't want to be the weird pastor. All right. I don't know. There's, there's Pastor John the weirdo. All right. I don't want that. You don't want that, do you? Right. I'm just checking. <laughs> You're with him? Oh. <laughs> Have you heard? <laughs> he moves at people. All right? <laughs> we don't want to be that. You don't have to be full of the Holy Spirit and be weird. Can I get an amen? amen. We, people think, you, you know, that when you're, when you're flowing in the Holy Spirit, you're going to act odd and you're going to do weird things. And you're just doing what God told you to do. You know, the Holy Spirit could do more in 10 seconds than you could do in 10 years. It's not for us to go up there and just say, you know, you're a dirty, rotten sinner. They don't need to hear that. You need to see the love on them, show compassion in them, and encourage them. And the Holy Spirit will do the correction. A lot of times we think we need to be the Holy Spirit. We don't need to be the Holy Spirit. Amen? So to be led by the Holy Spirit sometimes is in obedience. Jesus in Matthew 4 was obedient when he went out to the wilderness. I mean, of all places, he went out to a, a hot place. He went out for 40 days and he fasted and prayed. But that's right before he started his ministry. See, when the Holy Spirit begins to lead, miracles and signs begin to wonder, like Phil and Sandy said a few minutes ago. That was because of the leading of the Holy Spirit in praying. In, in Acts chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Now, check this out. This is so cool. So they brought the sick out into the what? Now, they weren't in the hospital. They weren't in the doctor's office. They brought them to the streets, all right, and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of who? Now, Peter was his disciple. He was just a man of God, but he was led by the Spirit of God. Passing um, by might fall on some of them. And look at verse 16. Also a multitude gathered from surrounding cities in Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were what? All healed. Praise God Almighty. Amen. See, that's what happens when you obey. Peter was just walking. He was just doing what God called him to do in the shadow because the Spirit, you know what? The same Spirit that lives in Jesus, that lives in Peter, lives in you. Amen. So you know what? This applies to you too. When you had the power, I was in the hospital uh, not that long ago uh, for just a checkup for my cancer. And praise God, I'm still cancer free, amen. amen. But I was still there and, and, uh, and I was walking in. And I just, you know, I thought, man, what do you think I'm going to walk in here and the Spirit of God is going to heal me and we're just going to drag the sick out of here. I said, I'm looking forward for that day. You know, I just want to go in and just Spirit of God begin to hit, bring about 20 of us, man. We'll load up the old white bus and the white van, and we just have a praise and worship time, and sick people run out of the hospital. How awesome would that be, amen? Like, that sounds loony. You know, that sounds like the power of God. I change a region like that. They could, they could deny that. You know, and so another question, how do we keep flowing in the Holy Spirit? First was obedience, and second, you have to be determined. Look at your neighbor and say, determined. Damon Reynolds is a very determined man. He's very determined. He wants a bus, a Greyhound bus. He's determined for that bus. And maybe one of these days we're going to do it. <laughs> but determined, you have to be determined to spend time with Jesus every day. Everybody say every day. It's, it's not a, you know, once a week thing. You have to be determined to get in your prayer closet and spend time with Jesus. You have to be determined that you're going to sit there and listen to his voice and not move until he speaks to you. You say, I don't have time for that, Pastor John. I, I, I work, I got family, I've got this and that and the other. I hear you, we're all busy, but you determine that you will be changed and led by the Spirit of God. Because I want to flow in the Holy Spirit. 
I don't want to flow in my natural thinking. I don't want to go through this world another 10 years and just do a mediocre Christian life. I want to go through this life in the power of Almighty God. Everything says in this word I will have in Jesus' name. Not for me, but for his glory. Because what we're building the kingdom of God. You know, I, I will not settle for what I live in this environment. I am not going to settle for drugs and alcohol. I will not settle for it. Till my last breath, I will chase every soul we can chase. Every drug addict will go out. Every homeless man, Richard. Every homeless woman. Every alcoholic. Every single mother. Every broken father. Every alcoholic. Come on, y'all with me so far? We're going to determine to go after them. They're going to burn you. Let them burn me. I'm going to go after them. Because I want to give them a chance to accept Jesus as the Lord's of life. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I remember uh, down there at Food for Souls up there in Austin, uh, Becky Thomas was saying she first set that up, and they had like 150, 200 people. Richard goes every Thursday. We leave here at 4.30. If you guys ever want to go up there, it's awesome. Isn't it, Richard? Earl and Austin? And it's awesome, man. And so what happens, it, it, they, she said the first time they did it, all they wanted to eat was desserts. <laughs> no one would eat regular food. And they would take desserts, and they would take all their food. And she said, she was so frustrated. And she said, Lord, they're taking all the desserts, and we don't have enough for next week, and we only have a limited budget. And the Holy Spirit said, spoke to her. He said, that doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. He said, give it away. And because we've been giving it away, people have been coming to Jesus. People are giving their heart to the Lord in situations that we thought would never change were changing. Pastor Jacob tells, there's been many times, many of times, not just one, many times they'd be working in the church, the Holy Spirit said, go outside to the, I'd go outside on the street and start walking around the street. They'd go out there and they'd run into someone, they'd accept Christ, the next day they would die. That's how, this is how powerful it is for us to be led by the Holy Spirit. Our Pastor Jacob's done three, I think he's done three funerals in his, since he's been up there, and three different people have died in a matter of seven days after accepting Christ. This is a serious matter. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. It said in Acts chapter 2, verses 2, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house as they were sitting. There, then there appeared to be the divided tongues as fire, and one set upon each other. That was called the day of Pentecost. They had to wait. They were waiting. They were obeying what Jesus told them to do. And they were determined to stand, stand there and sit there and pray until God moved. Seven weeks they waited. Some of us have trouble waiting seven minutes. <laughs> God said, I want them to wait and to be determined to wait for the Holy Spirit. Jesus kept telling them for three and a half years, I'm telling you, this is going to come. It's greater. It's going to fill you and it's going to change your life. And we know it did. We know the Bible tells us that. In, in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes that there was, over, there was 120 people in the upper room. And I talked about this last no, uh, November. But uh, in 1 Corinthians, it tells us that there was, there was 500 people that Jesus saw at the resurrection. But there was only 120 in the room. Some people just couldn't wait. I hope I'll never be one of those, but I just can't wait. I want to wait on God. I want to obey what God is telling me to do because I want to flow in the Holy Spirit and I want to be determined that I'm going to stand here until I hear his voice. A. a. Allen was a great evangelist in the early 1900s, mid-1900s, and he was from the Assemblies of God, and he saw a lot of miracles, a lot of signs, and a lot of wonders. But during his time of ministry, he was a man of God, you know, and I want to put that out there because he died a life that people are not really sure about. But I will say this, he was a man of God when he was moving. And, and A. Allen, when he was there, he, before he went into ministry, he went into his closet and he waited 11 days until the Lord told him to leave. 11 days he was on his face before God saying, God, show me where I should go. Show me what I should do. You know, we have to wait. You have to be so determined that God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want to flow in your Holy Spirit. Three today is you have to surrender. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's, that's probably the, the biggest thing that I see, the struggle I see in churches, 
is they get to the first two, but when they get to the third, while well, they're not flowing the Holy Spirit because they don't surrender. You, your mind starts playing tricks on you, and you start saying, well, I don't know about this, and I'm not sure about this, and I don't know if this is of God, and you begin to start backpedaling. Anybody ever done that before? I knew a young man years ago that was in this church probably 15 years ago, and God began to move, and man, it was strong on behalf, and he, he ran out the door, and he told me later on, he says, that was not of God. That was not of God. Now, he's confessed for that since then, praise God. And he just says, but he began to start preaching against the Holy Spirit. And he went through a lot of torment for many years. See, understand that he just couldn't understand it. And what he couldn't surrender his whole mind and thought and understanding to it. See, it's the surrendering is just a surrendering of trust. That we know that God is good. And we know that he has his best plans for us and we know the Holy Spirit's going to be a helper, then why don't we want it, amen? Why do we just want to just say, well, he's going to give me something bad. No, God is going to give you something good. It's going to, I try all the time, give you something that's going to help you. Give you something that's going to give you power, the Word of God says. And we begin to surrender. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says this, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord, there is what? Liberty. There is liberty. There is freedom in New King James says. If you surrender your heart and your mind to God and allow the Holy Spirit to flow, then there is freedom. And then you begin to just flow, flow, and surrendering. But you say, what, is, what does that mean to surrender? We're surrendering your thoughts. We talked about that last week. Your actions. Surrendering everything. And you know, in keeping the inside, we call this a temple, keeping it pure. You know, we, we, I tell you what, this is one thing that we are not going to have at Turning Point Church. We're gonna, we are going to have a full gospel church that our people are good characters. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It seems like we got full gospel churches and guys want to go out there and backstab each other and talk nasty about each other. Go out there and, and do things they shouldn't be doing, but they want to come here and roll in the Holy Spirit. We're not having that in Jesus' name, all right? We are not having a church like that. We are, this is why I love being in a Southern Baptist church, because word first, spirit second. Amen? You get the word of God in them, it changes their life, and they begin led by the spirit of God. Because the, 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 the word of God will not return void. And so this is powerful to, be, to have character. And, and I, I've been hesitant for months to, to talk on the power of the Holy Spirit because I didn't want to, but I knew this. When they get the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit starts doing the conviction. See, what a lot, we see a lot of churches sometimes, they have a form of religion and think, well, this is the way it should be. It's the fast song now, so I should, I should start dancing. Or, or this is a slow song, I should be on my, just do what God's told you to do. Just be led by the Spirit of God. But we have to keep the temple pure. We got to keep the temple holy. So if I walked in here, so you ain't with me yet so far. This is God's temple, amen. This is God's house, right? And I walked in here with a, a bud light. Would that be keeping it holy? Would I be keeping it holy? Wow. <laughs> Who am I preaching to tonight, all right? <laughs> We're going to ask one more time. I came here with a pack of Bud Lights and put them on the altar. Would that be holy, amen? Okay, so if I came in here and I got rated R movies, all, in, all I'm set on my phone, I put it right here on the, on the thing. Would, would that be holy? If I came in here and I began to gossip about half the people in the church and talk bad about them, would that be holy? If I held an offense of someone for a long time because I was upset with them, would that be holy? See, the temple should be holy. I'll tell you, we'll take a Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. How many got, need God's mercies? Amen. That you present your bodies as a what? Living Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, verse 2. And do not be what? To this world, 
but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says, I, be he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice to God. You know what you take in has to come out. I ate a donut this morning, and Dave Johnson saw it, but I didn't drink water, okay? But that donut, I'm going to have to work that donut off, all right? And if I have 10 donuts, I'm going to have to work it off. Y'all know what I'm talking about? See, I heard this. I think it's perfect time for that. What are you going to tell this? But years ago, there was, a, there was this minister in town, and, and this minister uh, was going around to the neighborhood and he was telling people about Jesus and telling them about his church and trying to invite them to church. And he saw the end of the cul-de-sac, the end of the neighborhood, there was this old woman, like she was about in her 80s or 90s, picking up branches, and picking up rocks. And, and as he got closer to her house, he was just amazed by the strength that she had at her age. So finally, as he got to her house and and he, before he even took his hand, he says, I've got to ask you, what does your diet consist of? She says, every day I drink a one liter of Mountain Dew and 12 Krispy Kreme donuts. He said, my goodness. She says, how old are you? She says, 26. <laughs> See, I'm telling you that because what you take in spiritually is going to come out. You know, I, I want to get rid of this dad figure. That means i got to quit eating fast food and drinking pop. And that's hard because I love a polar pop, all right? <laughs> but if I want to get rid of this figure and I want to get skinny again like I was when we first got married, I'm going to have to change some things. See, sometimes you've got to change some things for the Holy Spirit to flow. Can I get an amen? amen. See, we... We, we think it's okay to go out and do the things we want to do and wonder why we're not hearing God's voice, where we're, we're, we're not seeing the power of Almighty God. Well, I prayed for them and nothing happened. Maybe it's something internal. You know, it's, it's something that, that's why David, I love when David would write, and we say, say this all the time, search me and see if there's what? Any wicked way. See, I want the, the power of, of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to flow in my life that, that I will not just live another ordinary life. That each day I'm tuning in to hearing what God wants for my life. Because you know what? Just going through the motions is not good enough for me. I want to see God's power. I want to see people rising out of wheelchair. I want to see broken marriages restored. I want to see children that are run away from God give their heart back to Jesus. Tell this story real quick. They can come on up if you want. And I told this story years ago, and I haven't told it here in probably about five or six years, so I apologize if you remember this. Years ago when I was going down to Johnson Bible College, and I was driving my little white Dodge Neon, all right? That's a, that's a testimony right there, trusting the Lord driving that thing. But I was driving this little white Dodge Neon. I was driving my car. And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you need to pull over and you need to go get gas. Well, I had a half a tank. I had plenty of gas. But I knew it was the voice of God. And so I said, okay, Lord. So I turned my radio off and I'm praying. And I'm praying in the Spirit, man. And I'm praying, I'm praying, and I'm praying. So every gas station I get to, I said, Lord, is this it? And the Lord would give you peace or not. I drove for 30 minutes. Finally, in 30 minutes, I found the Lord. There was a big old Ferris wheel and a big old rocket ship right there. And I said, Lord, is this it? There was such a supernatural peace in that car. And I said, okay, God, that's it. In my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to tell someone about Jesus. I pull off the exit, and there was three gas stations. I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that was hard. And I said, Lord, is it this one with the Ferris wheel? It caught my eye. Didn't feel a peace. And I said, Lord, is it this one right here? I don't think it was a pilot. And it was a supernatural peace. And as I pull in to this gas station, there's my, my buddies that lived in Scottsburg that broke down. And him and another guy from Bedford, Indiana, were praying for an hour. 
God, send us someone. This is for cell phones. Send us someone that could pick us up. And when I pulled in that thing, my buddy is a Christian church all the way. If he's raising his hands, he's stretching, all right? But he, I pulled in that parking lot, and I heard him do this. I'll never forget. Praise God! And he started jumping and leaping, and his buddy was getting with it. And they ran towards my car, and I said, my goodness, I just saw you three months ago, bro. What in the world? He said, but I've been waiting for an hour that God was sending me someone for I could get a ride back to college or at least get back to home. God is, he works. But you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. you got to flow in the Spirit. So he's saying, can you stand with me tonight? Stand with me today, I'm sorry. How to flow in the Holy Spirit. Why are we not seeing breakthroughs in our, our life? Because the Holy Spirit is not leading Allow the Holy Spirit to lead. And it's this, this first is an obedience to God and the Holy Spirit. And, and second is a determination. Put your feet in the ground and say, I'm going to serve you no matter what. I'm going to spend my time with you no matter what. I don't care what life throws at me. I'm going to spend my time with you. And the third today is this, is a surrender, a surrendering heart to Jesus. Whatever you want for my life, I will do. All the disciples did what Jesus told them to do, and they died a martyr's life, but they were happy when they leave. Two of the disciples, if you read the book of martyrs, tells us this, of the history of them, is that when Peter and John, when they died, they were hung up across, upside down, because they said, I'm not worthy to die like my Savior. They hung them upside down, and when they were stabbing them, they were, they were telling people about Jesus. They are telling me they weren't full of the Holy Spirit. When Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, was, was getting stoned, he was asking them to hold their sins against them because he was led by the Holy Spirit. Are we today leading ourselves? Are we being led by the Holy Spirit? If you need a recommitment, if you need a refilling of the Holy Spirit, would you come on forward? Hey, let's... Let's just worship God. Amen.